Hello, hello, it is Giles from The Classic Valuer and today we are bringing you the 11 classic cars you will never get to drive, although we very much hope that you do. Let's go. Ooh, yeah. Bugatti Atalantique, the ultimate pre-war supercar. Four built, two and a half survive, and two of those survive relatively unscathed. One was cut in half by a train in 1955, hence the half. And the final one, well, that was lost in 1940 and the car world has been searching for it ever since. Probably one of the most valuable cars in the world. Price-wise, no one knows. Ask Ralph Lauren, he was the last one to buy one of these. Of course, the price wasn't disclosed. The Aston Martin DBR1, the most expensive British car ever sold. The car raced 18 times, it won 9 of those, and it had some pretty nifty people behind the wheel. Roy Salvadori, Carol Shelby, Jim Clark, Sterling Moss, and it gave Aston its only outright victory at Le Mans back in 1959. DBR1-1 sold for $22.5 million back in August 2017, and to date that is still the most expensive British car ever to be sold. Give me a 250 Tesla Rossa with pontoon fenders and I'll be a happy man for life. 33 250 Tesla Rossas were built between 1957 and 1962. The world record, Mr. Tom Hartley holds. 2014, he sold one for $40 million. That car was a 1957 prototype, X-Works, completely unrestored, raced at Le Mans in 1957, and then it won both the 1,000 kilometers of Buenos Aires and the 12 hours at Sebring with Phil Hill and Peter Collins behind the wheel. The title of this video is 11 classic cars you'll never get to drive and maybe that's a good thing with this one. It's a layout heli car. It's essentially a plane without wings. Made in 1921, made in France, designed by a Frenchman. 30 of them were produced. It's got a propeller attached to the front of the vehicle. It's a little bit crazy and they're all in private collections. They come out to the odd event now and then. Very special. Probably wouldn't want to drive it. The household name of Rolls-Royce. Down to two men back in 1904, Charles Rolls and Henry Royce. In 1904, they would agree that Charles Rolls would do the selling. Henry Royce would do the manufacturing. And this is where the first car came from. 1905, the 10 horsepower, because it um, had 10 horsepower. 20 were planned, 16 were produced, 4 survive, and Bonham sold the oldest one of which for £3.6 million back in 2007. This is the car for Porsche that put them on the big boys table. It gave them their first win at Le Mans. In this instance, we're talking about the 917K. K stands for Kurzheck, which is German for short tail. Values wise, well, Gooding sold a 917K in 2017. 14 million dollars. RM Sotheby's tried to sell one a few years ago. 16 million dollars for the lower estimate didn't reach reserve. Ooh, Bobby. The Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale. Maybe the most beautiful car ever made. 18 of them were built and they were very, very expensive. Six times the price of an average car. They were 20% more than a Miura back in the day, and they don't come on the market very often. Estimated values are around $10 million, but no one knows for sure. Fun fact, the early cars have twin headlights, the later cars have single headlights. It wasn't overly fun, but there you go. You think of Steve McQueen, you think of this car. Of course it is, the Jaguar XKSS. The road-going version of the D-Type, launched in 1957, 25 of these were planned, 16 ended up being built. There was a little incident, 12th of February 1957, a, uh, a fire broke out at the factory and nine of the cars were destroyed in that fire. Jaguar a few years ago were looking for a bit of more cash and they decided to build all those nine cars that never got produced and they got built as continuation cars. They're worth now just shy of $2 million when one sold back in 2020. An original XKSS. $13 million, one tried to sell for in 2017, didn't quite meet its reserve. But either way, you could buy one and be a little bit more like Steve McQueen. That's good value. 
the Aston Martin DB7. Sorry, six, five, four, three, the DB1. The Aston DB1 is the first car, of course, in their famed DB series, named after their owner, Sir David Brown. He bought the company back in 1947. 15 DB1s were produced between 1948 and 1950. And in Spa in 1948, they won the 24 hour race. Bonham sold one back in 2018 for 345,000. Back in the day, they were £3,000 plus purchase tax. It's about 110k in today's money. The Ferrari F50 GT, almost, almost a unicorn, not quite. It's the racing derivative of the Ferrari F50. Marinello built it intending to compete against the F1 GTR, the Porsche GT1s of the world, and well, they ended up cancelling it because they had performance concerns that they couldn't quite match them. They planned six, produced three, supposedly binned the other three chassis. One of them was sold back in 2000 for 1.43 million, and they are scattered around the globe, all three of them, one of which is owned by a Hong Kong based billionaire real estate developer. I'll pop his link below. And we'll finish with the most extravagant car from possibly the most extravagant era. It's the Type 41, otherwise known as the Royale. It costs six and a half thousand pounds when you could buy a house at the same time for 500. It weighed three tons, that's 25% more than a Rolls Royce nowadays. It's 20% longer than a current Rolls Royce and it's got a 12 litre engine to boot. Ettore Bugatti Plan 25, the Great Depression hit, they only sold seven. One of those seven was sold by Christie's all the way back in 1983. 5.5 million pounds. That's 20.6 million pounds in today's money. So there we have it, 11 classic cars you will never get to drive, although we very much hope that you do. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, comment below, and check out the classic value to know the price and price trend of any classic car in the world. Ciao.